You go into the center of a black hole, you get black holes from Einstein. Center of black hole is a singularity. All the theories say the matter occupies zero volume, thereby having infinite density. And that's kind of weird. What? No, you can't have infinite. No. That's a limit of Einstein's theory. That's where it breaks down. It's some have joked, that's where God divides by zero. Remember in math class, <laughs> you can't divide by zero. Right. It's, it's not, not defined or not allowed. So in Einstein's equations, we're dividing by zero at the singularity. So we all know that as brilliant as Einstein was and as successful as his general theory of relativity has been, it has limits. And one limit is the center of a black hole and another limit is the very birth of the universe itself. We have top people working on trying to resolve this singularity problem. And in so doing, you get to some ideas that, well, maybe our Big Bang, because the Big Bang is not gonna go away. All the data support this. So now I've got this Big Bang thing, okay? And well, is this embedded in something bigger? So when you put like quantum physics and general relativity and you try to come up with some bigger understanding, deeper understanding, string theorists have been all into this, you get a multiverse. We didn't pull that out of our ass, that came out of the equations. So how old is the multiverse? I don't know. It's definitely older than our universe because it birthed our universe and it births other universes and it births the way the equations drive it, an infinity of universes. This is the idea that maybe there's a version of us in another yeah. where I'm bald and you got the afro and who is, but everything else is the same. And also a version where everything's the same. Where everything would be the same, yes. Everything you've ever said has been said before exactly in the same order. Correct. There's no reason to presume that everything in this universe isn't or hasn't already played out in the exact way in another one of these infinite universes. And in an infinite number of different ways. Correct. And so that that is what comes out of the equations. So that makes the Big Bang a kind of a small part of a much larger whole. One of the hypotheses, and I'm highly simplifying here, is that the energy gained by rolling down a hill, and these are energy hills that would exist in this sort of higher dimensional space that we're talking about, that energy has to manifest in that object somehow, and it becomes an explosion and gives birth with enough energy, it gives birth to matter, uh, everything that we know and love, and it expands. Because when you concentrate that much energy in a small spot, that's the only thing you can do. I understand that expand. you're simplifying it, but I don't understand. Simplify it in the sense that, um, I'm, by using this basin analogy and rolling down right. a hill, that they're, they're equations of the energetics of a system. And this is called, it, this is called a, a false vacuum. So you can be in a place that's not the true bottom energy state of the system but you think everything is fine, and but it's not. And so if you move around in among these hills and valleys, you end up birthing universes out the other side. And this multiverse concept actually delivers this for you. And not only that, it could be that other Big Bang events um, might have a different, a slightly different laws of physics in it. Mm. So you want to watch out for that if you cross over from one universe to the other and the charge on the electron is slightly different. You could like, all your atoms could just scatter, scatter or compress. compress into a pile of goo. Yeah, oh. so take, a, take something to test first. Big Bang, the birth of space-time energy and everything we know and love about this universe occurred 14 billion years ago, and we have no idea what happened before it. And we're still expanding, as we will forever.